Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the weekly check-in. My name is Dennis Sanders, and I am the pastor of First Christian Church of St. Paul. I hope you're having a good week so far. So, I don't. Maybe I talked about this uh, in a video, uh, a few videos back, that I was checking out TikTok, and I decided to check out one of the hashtags that are out there, and the hashtag I checked out was um, hashtag progressive clergy. And um, checked it out, saw what it was like, and what I found there was surprising, but maybe it wasn't so surprising. What I found were really a lot of people kind of just kind of announcing their positions on various issues. There were people there that were talking about LGBTQ issues and others that were talking about uh, being pro-choice. Um, all of them in some ways were kind of in your face and they were, you know, talking about how it was okay to be progressive politically and in some ways thankful that they weren't conservatives. Now, there is something similar happening in another part of the social media and on Twitter among conservatives. There is this group of male pastors um, that sometimes people call them Theobros. And um, what they love to do is basically say some of the most misogynistic comments you can think of. They are basically trying to say that, and they are usually trying to counsel women in how they should act and how they should look and all of this, and that this is a part of what it means to be a God-fearing Christians. I really have to feel for the wives of these men. Social media Christianity tends to be a place where people like to shout their positions on various issues. And I don't want to say that those issues aren't important. They can be. Not Theobro ones, but some of those issues are important. But I think what's interesting, whether it's conservative or progressive is neither side are really telling stories. They're issuing statements, but they're not sharing experiences. They announce things, but there's no real connection. In some ways, what they're saying is basically preaching to the choir. The Christian philosopher James K. A. Smith has noted and when he talks about persuasion and how important that is to the life of the church, he says, what's important these days is that we preach loud enough to be sure everyone in our choir hears us. Now, the theologian Andrew Root says that we should be accepting of persons and not ideologies. And when he talks about accepting persons, I tend to think he means accepting people's stories, the messiness of people's lives, and how that story connects with the larger story of God. But there is a temptation in our age, the age that we live in, to really give up accepting or hearing people's stories and instead really kind of falling into trying to make statements and statements that show that we are on the right side of whatever issue is out there these days. Last week, the church treasurer and I, we met with some people from our denomination as we're trying to structure our finances um, and 
so that we can kind of sustain our ministry, ministry far into the future. And one of the things that came out of that, that conversation is that we, as a congregation, need to find our ministry. And it was interesting that that was brought up because I've been thinking about that for, for months. And there are just a lot of questions about that. And well, how do we define ourselves as a congregation? What is the story of our congregation? What is the past? What is the present? Where are we headed? And what are the stories of the individuals within that congregation, within our congregation? And how does that connect to God's story? You know, social media is a wonderful thing. And I really mean that. I'm not being sarcastic. I've actually worked in that medium for almost 20 years now. It is a way of people, for people to communicate. It is a way for people to connect. We cannot ignore that, I think, importance of social media. But there's also a downside to it. Because, of course, social media can affect us. It changes us. And, and one of the ways it can do that is that it can flatten people, flatten us down to simple ideologies and nothing more. And in, the, in that, we lose the stories of individuals. But I think we also lose the story of God when we do that. 2022 has been a challenging year for this congregation. We sold our building, and then in the space of a few weeks, we had to try to move and get rid of a decade of stuff, decades of stuff. And somehow we did it. And on top of that, we then had to try to find a place to call, a new place to call home. And we did that too, but that was a lot of work. And we spent the fall kind of catching our breath and maybe resting and maybe even a little bit of mourning because there were people who didn't come with us as we moved. But I think that as we are now kind of taking stock of the year behind and getting ready for 2023, I really hope that as a congregation, we can encounter God's story again. And we can encounter God's story in our own stories. And that I hope that we can remember our, the affirmations of our faith that are expressed especially in the design of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, where it talks about the church being um, the place in baptism where we enter newness of life in Jesus Christ. And that through the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship. And that at the table, we remember the saving acts of Jesus Christ that began in a stable where a baby laid in a manger. It is easy in this day and age for us to announce our position on basically anything. I hope that First Christian can be a place where we are willing to share our stories, to listen to other people's stories, and together to find our place within God's story of salvation, and that we can meet the God who is God, the God who has a story to tell us. Take care, Godspeed, and I'll see you soon.